There's my guy, Marty. What's up, Marty? Marty got the game. We can't hear. And you know, Marty's always got the latest versions of the dope parallel, man. I know, bro. I know, man. He's that dude. Exclusive black man lab. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, my, my stuff wasn't working. I can just hear y'all talking. <laughs> <laughs> and this this is this is old by the way. This is first edition. Is it? Oh man, it's like them J's, man. It's like them J's, bro. Come back. The older the better. We live, fellas. All right. Welcome to Black Man Lab, everybody. We are live Monday, May 10th. We are so glad to have you here tonight. Uh to be able to have a conversation around internships for our young people, man. We want to make sure that our young people are getting information that are helping them to matriculate into the, whatever their professional endeavors are. So um, before we get into that, I want to talk about uh, what we do every week, and that is to make sure that we are centered and that we are also bringing in the ancestors and also talking about from whence we came. But before we do anything, I'm going to bring my brother. Uh, actually, wait a minute. We got friends. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Hold on. You, you know what to do. You got to go with Sensei, man. Uh, got to go with the master. As, as we have one of our panelists tonight is actually one of our brothers who is is one of our board members for Black Man Lab um, and is usually here with us on a weekly basis, but has just been overwhelmed with all kind of stuff from his own school and whatever else. That, that our brother Fred Parham does on a weekly, daily basis um, to, to help move us forward as a people. So we are fortunate to have him tonight. Um, and normally he is one of the, the brothers that gets us centered. So I'm going to ask Fred to help to get start to get us centered tonight. Brother Fred. Man, thank you, Marty and Joe, man. It's so great to be here uh, back, man, on the lab, in the lab with the beaker and the and the chemicals mixing it up for the brothers and sisters out here in the community. And so um, just great to be here. And why get centered? Why have the ritual of, you know, getting centered and refocusing at this hour in the day? Uh, so important to be able to move through the ups and downs of one's day. Uh, one, so that you can keep your, your spiritual balance as you go through about, you know, kind of pinging off people and their energy. And the other reason is so that you're always in a place of spiritual balance uh, and, and having clarity of thought so that you can use and exercise good judgment. And so to that end, the Black Man Lab's commitment to getting Black men and Black women to center themselves is a constant Thing. And so how we do it is we sit up in a position where our posture is straight as we listen and tune in. And then we own three, two, one, take a deep breath, three, two, one, and slowly exhale and feel those shoulders drop. Let's do it again with me on the sound of my voice. Three, two, one, and exhale. Three, two, one. And man, that awesome exercise takes about 10 seconds, but boy, it's worth it for a lifetime. Absolutely, Brother Fred. It is absolutely worth it. It's uh, It helps me for sure every week when we do that because uh, Lord knows that we, we carry a lot of tension as black men. Uh, we carry a lot of weight um, as fathers, as, as husbands, as significant others, as whatever we are. We carry a lot of weight and um, sometimes it's good just to be able to release. And that release is important so that we can take in information um, because we know if we got a lot of head head um, trash going on that that gets in the way of us learning. So uh, we're glad to do that every week. And, and man, glad to have you here to do it this, this week, man. It's, that, that warms my heart, Fred. So um, the other thing is that we, we always talk about uh, from whence we came. And uh, the Black Man Lab started about four years ago, a little, well, almost five years ago now. Um, four brothers got together to uh, get their sons together, to have them to talk to somebody other than themselves. As we know as fathers, that quite often our sons kind of tune us out. 
but they might listen to an uncle, a godfather, a close friend, somebody that we have as a trusted advisor. So they started doing that about four years ago. Brother Miley Davis, three other brothers uh, got together and um, that just expanded. Those young fellows that were there, you know, brought other brothers into the space, brought other young brothers into the space to just get information on life, whether it was some career related or something just self self development related. So um, that grew to us uh, being at the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA and it, having over 250 brothers in the same spaces from ages five to 85 uh, to share information to share space and we call it a safe and sacred space to do that and uh we 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 continue to do that through uh this pandemic um through this this vehicle here which has afforded us the opportunity to bring in brothers from around the country so um while we are not in the same space where we can rub shoulders with one another we are also in a space where we can give access uh to brothers from around the country as well as um, sisters that join this conversation quite often as well. So um, one of the things that we also do every week is that we bring the ancestors into this space. And I saw Brother Mowley on here, but he didn't, dipped out, so I'll go ahead and do it. Um, but we bring in the ancestors into this space every week because we know that the work that we do uh, and the work, work that all of us do would not have happened if it weren't for those that came before us and that those but that came before us not just necessarily within our family but those that were you know in the motherland that got brought brought over here through the um through through slavery and and all those other things um so we want to want to call their names and bring them into the space so what i want you to do first and foremost is think of somebody um in our history yeah, in, in our in our ancestry that comes from uh, the motherland, somebody that you can think of that, uh, you know, that they wouldn't, we would not be doing this work if it hadn't been done by them first. So think of somebody like that, hold them in your heart and raise a fist. And we say, Ashe. Next, I want you to think of somebody, um, somebody like a, uh, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, one of these civil uh, rights activists, somebody who did some work in the past that changed the trajectory of where we were as black folks, that, that brought us into a space that we hadn't been in before. Somebody that um, you know has some meaning to you. So think of somebody like that, raise a fist. And we say, Ashe. I say, I say. Next up, I want you to think of somebody like uh, your Fannie Lou Hamers, um, Ella Bakers, somebody that was an activist uh, uh, that, that did the work to eman help to emancipate our people even further um, and raise a fist. And we say, I say. I say. Lastly, I want you to think of somebody within your own bloodline, somebody like um, your big mamas. <laughs> Uh, your, your, your great, great grands that you may have known of, um, the lady that was down the street from you that actually helped to rear you. Cause we, sometimes we don't look at, you know, we talk about, um, it takes a village. And, and one of the things that we've gotten away from sometimes is our village actually wrapping their hands around, um, um, us as individuals. So think of those people, hold them in your heart right now. And we raise the fist, and this time we're going to say Ashe three times. Ashe. 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 All right. Um, Brother Maldi, I see you, you checked in with this. Want to say a word. Peace, fam. Good to see everybody, man. Um, you know, these, these internships are key and critical, y'all. And uh, we've got some, some great brothers here to share. Um, and I'm going to be tuning in. I just wanted to just touch bases and, uh, you know, thank everybody for joining us. Thank everybody for continuing to support the Black Man Lab. We have a big event coming up on May 23rd. Um, reach out to Black Man Lab. Uh, it will be a in-person event for um, our young creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs. And so we, we can't reveal the location because obviously there are some COVID protocols that are in place, 
But if you are a part of the Black Man Lab world, please reach to us um, so that we can get you the information. You don't want to miss this. The young people have been preparing and creating, collaborating and centering themselves. And so um, I just give thanks, Brother Joe, Brother Marty. Uh, and then we see, obviously, our brother Fred Parham, who's going to be on this one with Brother Otis. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you uh, continuing to, to lean in and give to our young brothers and sisters. And as always, man, we just want to give a salute to Brother Mark Lawson, who has been steady as a rock. That is a rock. Yes, so sir. Just wanted <laughs> in just to uh, acknowledge that we created Black Man Lab to, to be a safe and sacred space where Black men could come together, where young Black men and elders, and we could have an intergenerational dialogue. And fortunately, due to this virtual um, situation, we're able to extend that to our young sisters as well. And so we hope that everyone has an opportunity to touch bases, to lean in, to embrace, and to feel this beautiful energy of what it is to be Black and on the road to liberation. All right. Peace and blessings. Thank you, Marty and Joe, man, for y'all. Solid as a rock, keeping keeping the tradition going and hosting uh, this important conversation. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, man. And we'll holler at you later on. Jump back on if you can. Yes, sir. Uh, so without further ado, guys, let's let's get into the conversation because um, I think it's obviously important and um, we, we want to be able to touch on as much as we can. Tonight again with me is my brother Joe Barker, who again is another member of uh, the Black Man Lab board and has been by my side doing this basically every week unless Joe has something come up, which is rare, but he he's always behind the scenes no matter what. So Joe, hey man, appreciate you. Love you. And I want you to jump in. I know you have some some insight Definitely. on the subject matter as well. So Definitely. let me get let, strong guys, topic. Yeah. Let me get let you guys give a quick introduction of yourselves and uh kind of where you you fall into this space and uh we'll dive in. So um first uh, brother Otis, how about you? Give it give an introduction of yourself, man. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Otis Three uh, here um, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with the firm uh, called Lanier. So it's a business development, event management, and community engagement firm. And we work with uh, several different clients. Uh, so we're doing some stuff uh, with the uh, 100 Black Men of Atlanta to help uh, engage their collegiate 100 students as well as their high school students. Uh, we also do some work with the 100 Black Men of America and also a National Black MBA Association. So very excited to discuss internships and the importance of, uh, you know, getting engaged, uh, learning the business from the ground up, uh, getting the experience, uh, learning customer service at a young age. And so, um, you know, uh, again, with Lanier, the website is www.lienneur.com. And so uh, work with several different other organizations as well around education, uh, better outcomes for our kids, which is called book. And so uh, really um, excited to be here with Fred and Joe to discuss this important topic. Glad to have you here, brother. So thank you for your time and, and the insight that you're going to give. So thanks again, brother. Brother Fred. Hey, man, I uh, just happy to be in the house among the number. Uh, but a little bit about me for the listener audience uh, and viewing audience is my background is education, um, just career, about 25 years now in some form or fashion. Uh, having gone from the classroom to, you know, having my own independent, pro you know, homeschool collective and then, you know, serving on the board of two charter schools and then, you know, working with the 100 um, all these years, about 18, uh, I've stepped into a unique place. Uh, in the city that I found to be, you know, an opportunity for us to really have meaningful impact in all of our preparation programs and all of our prep, you know, schools that take our, our programs that take place within the school around professional development. Uh, there was very few that focused on that hard work of internships uh, uh, because, you know, it, it's a different space. And so for me having to have built the program uh, with, you know, with the 100 Black Men of Atlanta in its second year, um, just want to share kind of what I found to this point. Awesome. Thanks, Brother Fred. Appreciate you, man, and look forward to your insight, my man. 
Um, Joe, what about you, man? Yeah, I know you have some experience as well. So, man, I'm really excited about this topic because, you know, it's, it's everybody has their respective space, right? And much like Fred, you know, I, I'm not the, um, the, the person that's been in it as long as he has and the professional, but, you know, I myself be, got into education because I'm like, man, that's, that's what's strongly needed in the African-American community. And, you know, once we see how strong education is needed, how much we support, it's an easy segue into they need job opportunities. And so one of the things that I worked with Fred on, and we, we kind of both had um, a, a passion for some things that I was doing over at one of the schools I worked at. I'll give them a little shout out, not too much, but Chris Ray is, um, you know, the, the internship program that they had there. And Fred worked with me there and, and, and kind of did some research and so forth. And I want him to kind of unpack some of the things that he saw. But one of the reasons I, I am so, felt so strongly about their pedagogy and what they do is because every student at that school gets an internship. Like that is literally their way of, you know, being scholarship because the company scholarship them. That is literally how they are working their way through school. So every student there is working for, it's probably 141 companies that partner with Crystal Ray um, and at least 50 of them are Fortune 500 companies. So I want to kind of bring Fred in and Fred, talk about a little bit of the work that you, you did, some of the research you did and, um, you know, how, how valuable was that and what are you able to do with that? Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Joe. And, and, and just think about <clears throat> uh, kind of when we unpack um, this, this whole world of internships, we're talking, you know, young people, mostly when you think about it in college, right? And then the next thing is you're trying to get an internship opportunity with some company, right? Uh, and, and so the, the general thinking is the better the internship or the better brand of company, uh, the better the internship. And so that's the general thinking. And so, but when I started digging in, you know, I started with this governor commissioned um, um, kind of, well, it was called a commission uh, around employment. And so what the governor's office did is they convened his office, which is, you know, the state administration, and then the board of the Georgia Board of Regents, which runs the colleges, the state colleges in the state, and more importantly, the curriculum, uh, the, 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 the curriculum for those colleges. And then third, the business community. And so the top 33 businesses in the, in the state. And this was about five years ago. So they traveled around the state convening these meetings, surveying uh, you know, local businesses, uh, the local college leadership, uh, and then and, and understanding what is it that companies need or want from you know, incoming you know, workforce. Uh, and then what does the current curriculum uh, train students on and prepare them to do, right? So what skills will they have when they leave these colleges? What's available? Mm -hmm. And then third, how can the government facilitate uh, those two entities coming together with the least amount of, of uh, wrinkles and problems? So what it revealed was that Georgia has an aging workforce. So uh, there's going to be uh, a shortage of people to fill you know, a, an exploding economy. And then two, that the, the, the latest young people say in the past five to six years, companies are saying that young people are not staying. Uh, while they may have the academic credentials, they lack in certain, you know, uh, soft skills, as they say, or essential skills, uh, depending on what side of, you know, the classroom you're on. And so, and then thirdly, uh, just the ability to problem solve in the workplace and, and right. work on long-term projects. So those were the top three things that the governor's report uh, really kind of bear out from what from the company side uh, or business side of things. Mm -hmm. So then they mm -hmm. began to devise, you know, a curriculum to address that. But remember, schools specialize in hard skills or things that are classroom based. And you had organizations that did that work like En-ROADS uh, and others to prepare students for internships, but the field is not littered, it's very narrow. And so tonight, you know, kind of setting the table with that piece 
kind of helps us understand like, so then what should a, a collegiate, and I'm gonna say high school student, because uh, those fell, or those apprenticeships are possible. What skills do they need to have? What knowledge do they need to have? And what do they need to be able to do? Those three questions uh, when they're seeking internship opportunities. That's powerful, that's powerful. And I, I think we've had somebody that just kind of navigated through that space, Marty, if you want to kind of have that conversation. Yeah, I want to bring on my, my nephew here, uh, Kahari Davis. Kahari, you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, guys? What's happening, man? So here's, here's what I want you to do. Um, I know that you have just busted your tail real hard to get this internship that you have. Um, and, and I want you to kind of give some some background, first of all, who you are and what you've done, where, you, where you're in school at, and um, then talk about the process, that process that you you took to get this um, this internship that you have. All right. Um, yeah, my name, how y'all doing? My name is Kahari Davis. Uh, I'm a rising senior film major at Howard University. Hey, you. And uh, yes, yes, you already know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this like this last semester, or well, really this whole this whole school year, I've really been focused on getting an internship since I will be a rising senior, and I know like that's vital to like uh, continue continuing a job when I after I graduate. So I've been applying to just a lot of places, and basically, I mean, all my strategy was just to keep applying places. So I applied to probably around like twenty five internships, I would say, and got denied by all of them except like two. So. Uh, I mean, definitely, I would just say don't get discouraged by the process. Like, it was definitely a point, so I was getting discouraged when my dad was just like, you know, just, just the process, you know, not everyone's going to see the same vision as you, but uh, just keep applying. So, yeah, I just kept applying, and I and I kept fixing my resume a cover letter. Like, <clears throat> like I had multiple rough drafts of my resume a cover letter. Like, I just kept, like, tweaking it until, it, like, it was, like, very concise. It wasn't too long. Because at first, my I had a resume, it was, like, three pages, and then I got it down to like, and my and my folks are telling me like it's too long. Like everyone might not just look throughout that whole resume, like it's too long. So I got it down to like a page and a half. And that's still kind of pushing it, but uh so yeah, that's it. I just kept applying and and I got two internships now. So a, a qu question for you, Harry, which is beautiful by the way. Great job Thanks. and perseverance. But question for you now the, the companies that you were applying to. Did they? Did you know they were already giving internships, or you were just forcing the issue on your end? Uh, okay, yeah. Like in terms of finding them, on Marty. Yes. Oh, in terms. Of, okay, yeah. Like I was. It's a lot of good websites. Uh, I was using to find them. Uh, Indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. Indeed.com. Glassdoor. It's uh, another one. Oh, Handshake. Handshake. Mm -hmm. Those are all good platforms. I use all of them, you know. Uh, even if you go to, like, if you're in college, your career services, uh, your career services department, they should be plugging you because I get a lot of emails from my career service. I know you go to Howard, you should definitely be receiving emails all the time about internships. So every time I see an email about a production or film internship, uh, I just apply it. Like, it didn't really matter. I just apply as soon as it, my uh, school sent it out because if your school sending it out, that means that these right. companies are reaching out to your school, meaning yep. that once you apply, you know, they're going to see, oh, you go to Jackson State or wherever, wherever college you go to, you know, you get firsthand priority. So when your school sends it out, apply. It increases your chances of getting it instead of just applying from, like, through the website or something. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anybody have any questions for Hari? No, I think actually, man, Hari hit something on the head uh, when he said, you know, he applied for about 25 and he got two. Don't get discouraged because 99 no's get, get canceled out by one yes, young folk. So those who are listening or will be watching in the future, remember that uh, persistence, persistence, persistence. My only question for Hari is, is how did your network help you, bro, in terms of just knowing what's available? Because uh, I stress to my students is your network, you know, is powerful when you use it. Well, yeah, um, uh, I was really, I'm pretty cool with the career, who's a lady who's over career services. So, you know, I got in on like this email list early freshman year, you know, like, so she's been plugging me. I've been seeing these internships. Also, 
through career services, they helped me uh fix my resume up. Uh, so like that that network definitely did help because you know my resume was getting fixed by like someone who really like does that professionally, help build resumes and stuff, and be looking at people or recruiting. So yeah, it definitely did help me like knowing uh people throughout Howard. And Marty, if I could, I want to bring uh, Otis into the conversation. Please, Joe, please. Um, just on, because I think, you know, as the young people, you know, go through and searching for internships, it'd be helpful for them to know kind of what the companies are looking for and how they plan to recruit interns and then on what part. So I know OT is, is like a Swiss knife in that regard. Please. He can kind of give us some broad, uh, just kind of conversation around you know, how do companies put their internships uh, together? And then, you know, how do they put it out for college students to access and that kind of thing? You're on mute, brother. Yeah, great question, Fred. I think as you mentioned before, you know, understanding your network and how you can tap into your network helps a lot. Like Kari said, he was able to get in on the email list early. So part of it is just getting the information and being able to um, have access to it. For example, with some of the students you work with, you know, you may get an email from me or a text from me saying, hey, throw this out. And uh, it's an opportunity for them to apply for an internship or, you know, at least people know that they're, you know, that they're hiring, as he mentioned. Uh, some of the things that they're looking for is what differentiates you from other people? What makes you different? What makes you unique? Uh, what are some of the experiences that you have or have had? Um, that, that make you different. Uh, one of the things they're looking for is definitely how do you problem solving? So, you know, how can you solve a problem? How can you add value? Um, as well as, again, as I mentioned earlier, customer service, you know, being able to treat their customers properly and correctly and doing those type of things. And so, um, you know, it's a great time now, you know, to be a diverse candidate because everyone's now, look, now, everyone now is looking at, you know, who they have in the company, what their hiring practices are, um, are they really going out recruiting at Howard? Are they going out recruiting at Clark Atlanta or are they just going to Georgia Tech and Georgetown? And so um, again, they wanna be able to look at diverse candidates and how um, they have the opportunity to attract those um, students. And so um, everybody wants to showcase what their company is. For example, you know, you have Coca-Cola, but you also may have a Cox Enterprises. So Cox Enterprises, most people are like, what is that? And so, you know, they wanna sit around and talk about you know, we do, we have auto trader. Uh, we are into cable, we're into newspapers. And so it's an opportunity for students to learn the, the business from there for it. Thank you, OT, for that. And I'll just throw, you know, and just think about, you know, the tech industry, which is a growing market in Atlanta. And Otis can speak directly to it and probably everybody here uh, who is in, in, in the workforce. But so the tech industry is growing here in Atlanta. You've got Apple doing some things. I know, you know, I've been privy to some things that, that affirm Microsoft is going to do more than the building that's just on 17th Street uh, and doing work in the community. And so, you know, as the tech industry grows, our young people are generally end users, you know, for those who are watching, meaning you're using either holding the joystick or, or controller or holding the device or phone. And uh, but man, there are thousands of internships out here that are coming and that are here. And so we want the young people on this call um, or who will watch it later to just know how do they one prepare. So, so what skills do you need to have? Uh, and so, you know, one of the main things that the companies said and that I've heard with my own ears from 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 executives is that you know young people come into the to the office space or to the interview and they, you know, the, on paper, they're beautiful, right? Perfect candidate. But it's, it's the soft skills in terms of like Otis said, like customer service, where you would break that down is, you know, how do I, you know, make myself feel comfortable as a, you know, a black male in a, in a place that, you know, might be majority white or, or Asian or women without, being, you know, like, ah, I'm here, but saying, hey, you know, I'm comfortable in my skin, you know, and I'm confident with the skills that I, skill set. And so that's just a matter of, you know, being on time. You know, that was one of the, the challenges that company said for a prolonged period of time, right? You know, being on time to work, being able to follow through uh, in terms of you send an email requesting information 
and then being able to just follow back up to see that something was done that was asked of you. And so those are what we refer to as soft skills. And in, in the program, Career Pipeline program, that we focus on 10 training sessions uh, in the spring around you know, emotional intelligence, for example, conflict resolution in the workplace. As Otis said, people want to bring you into their company, one, because of who, what skill set you bring. Two, because you can solve a problem and you can be effective communicator, uh, both in writing and orally. And so honing those skills give you opportunities in the internship to practice for the long game, right? And that's what the internship opportunity really does is give you a little practice for the long game. And uh, so I'll pass it to Joe to talk a little bit about his experience there also. Yeah, sure. I think, um, you know, with me, one of the things I, I liked about Crystal Ray, and again, I, I don't want to give him too much airtime. One thing that they do have right is supporting the youth in our most underserved communities with internship opportunities. These are students that, you know, aren't going to have the 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 Marty's, the Fred's, the, the Otis, the Joe's, the, the Mark's as parents that are gonna like help them navigate some of these territories. And so the fact that they're giving them these internships is, is really important because to your point, and, and all of y'all are mentioning it, to your point, these are students that at 13, 14 years old gonna be working Fortune 500 companies. And now not only do they get to college and have that experience, but now they recognize the importance of having that experience. It, it's one of those things like any coach knows, I can't want it more than you. I can't want an internship more than you. God only wanted that intern. You know how many, you know, uh, jobs he applied for? You, you got to want it. And the thing that they get at Crystal Ray is once they get that first experience, they realize, oh, look at all these people, these people in, in here. You know, when I, Fred, I think I heard you say something. Now, I'm interested in both you guys kind of unpacking this. But one of the things they seem they go in those internships is the amount of, I can say because I'm old, the amount of old people in these jobs. And you know what's happening. And my nephew, who graduated from Harvard, never had an intern, complained about this after Harvard. Like, we can't get jobs because all y'all old people still got them. And y'all are doing a great job. It's not an insult, it's a compliment. It's like y'all are doing a great job. But these young folks are having these challenges in this economy getting it partially because they, they're not aware of them, but then they're also competing with us, if I'm being honest. What, what is y'all's take on that? How do y'all handle that, Otis and, and, and Fred? Well, I was going to mention, as Fred uh, was, was, was uh, discussing, you know, I think, too, the challenge with uh, young people in the workforce is how to, how to communicate across generational lines. And, you know, as youth, uh, you know, there's a lot of messages that go back and forth via text. And when you're in the workplace, you know, the older older guy may not want to communicate through text. He may want you to pick up the phone and call him, or yeah. you know he may want to reply to email. And so that's one thing. But secondly, um, I think you know um, as you mentioned in regards to the older uh, uh, people in the workforce, you know, try to get one of them to be your mentor. You know, say hey, mm. uh, I want to learn from you, Joe. And Joe, um, you know, I see I like what you're doing. And so now Joe is kind of passing along some of those uh, skills uh, to you which are soft skills more than likely, um, you know, to help you navigate throughout the system. Great point. If, if I could hey, jump in real that's quick. That's a wisdom nugget right there. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I could jump in real quick, I think one of the things that's essential as we talk about uh, internships is the amount of education that you get in an internship is going to actually wind up trumping what you've learned in school. Sure. And, and that occurs because, and we all know this because we, we're all, you know, even in our work world, the same thing happens, right? You, you've gone to school, you got your degrees, whatever. And then when you go to whatever company that you happen to work for, you got to learn their way, right? right. You, you may know a little bit about the, the industry of whatever that is, but you have to learn the way of that company. And the quicker that you learn the way of that company, the more that you um part of the culture and ingrained in that, in, in that company's um, um, workforce. So I, I've seen this time and again, and I, I would be interesting to talk to Kahari about it after the fact is that 
when you go, all the stuff that you've learned in school, there's just a, there's, it helps to help you be able to learn. But what you learn there at that job, at that, that company that you're interning with, is that the education that you wouldn't have got otherwise. Because it's specific to that, that company. So it's, it's important to, to your point, Brother Otis, it's important to be able to acquiesce to that culture of that company you know, and be able to communicate across lines because that's what makes you learn it quicker. And then, and I'll, I'll shut up after this. And then after you've gone through school, guess what? You are marketable as hell because you have already gotten those soft skills from this other, from this company. Now, generally they might want to hire you or a competitor that knows that you work for this company and, and, and we're successful in it, especially if they'll give you a letter of recommendation. I know that from my daughter, she, right. interned, she interned with, um, um, I Heart radio, uh, okay. for two summers prior to, to, you know, graduating from Mizzou. And so when she came out, she didn't know what she was going to do. She said, I want to work. I want to work for I Heart. And so I said, well, work for iHeart. You know, you, you've worked there. They should probably want to hire you. And she said, I want to work in L.A. I said, well, go to L.A. They'll probably want to hire you. And uh, so she applied there. They, they, they wound up hiring her. And guess yeah. what? After a short period of time, another competitor pulled her away. Exactly. He's a, a midday radio host. So those things, the, the skills that you'll get there, um, you're not going to see in school per se. You know, you're not going to see because it's unique to each of those companies. So that's why this is so important for our young folks. And again, I'll be really interested to to get Kahari's feedback after his his first internship there. So, oh, definitely. I'm sorry I cut y'all off. I just wanted to jump that in for before we uh, move forward. So uh, now let me let me let me bridge those two right quick, and then Fred, I'm gonna pull you in. But let me bridge those two because. Because out is what I, I, I don't I, I think everybody needs to understand the importance of what you just said. Um, and then Marty combine it with what you said. First and foremost, Otis, what you said is don't go into the work environment as an adversary, go in as an ally. You know, mm-hmm. want to learn from them, create an environment where they want to mentor you. They want to they want you to be that apprentice. Because what you're creating there is is a, 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 a mentorship, a friendship instead of an enemy. Instead of somebody that's threatened by you, now they want to teach you. Now they're looking at you as, hey, this is somebody that can replace me so I can do better things, not this somebody who can replace me and I'm not going to have a job. It's a whole different mentality shift, I agree with you. And Marty, to your point, what happens is any job, and this is why I, I'm, y'all, y'all know me, I will apply for, I apply for so many president's jobs and schools because I'm like, they ain't no better than me. They, they, they don't have nothing I don't have because at the end of the day, any job is going to teach you what you need to learn. It will not necessarily, I mean, I ain't talking about med school and so forth, but it's not necessarily going to come from a book education. It's going to come from some practical experience that you get with the internships, and then the job is going to tell you specifically what you need to know. So if you combine the mentorship, the friendships that you create, along with the, the attitude of, I'm going to learn from this to apply to wherever, now you've learned the skill set, you have a transferable skill, you have people that can write you letter recommendations, and that's, that's just invaluable. So I think, you know, I wanted to key on those two points that y'all mentioned because that's, getting an internship can be difficult, and it, and it is, and we're going to talk about some spaces also where, where, you know, you can go look for some of those for even this summer. But knowing once you're in an internship, those two things is extremely important. So, yeah, like Marty, we're going to have Kahari back on here you know, at the end of the summer and be like, all right, how'd that go? You know, so I think that's going to be important. My bad, Fred, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Brother, uh, no, brother, that, that was exactly what needed to be said. Um, and, and all I, I was going to try to move, you know, move a little bit forward because I didn't want, you know, to rest everything on those who are in college when I know we've got young brothers and sisters who are, um, you know, going to technical or trade school, which, sure. is, which is absolutely the way to go if you're yeah. looking at that tech side, you know. And so, you know, for that group, oftentimes the formal pathways of internships, like there is no career center when you're at the junior college or when you're at DeVry. Well, it's one at DeVry, but then you find yourself uh, having to do something a little bit different that sounds more like an apprenticeship. 
Uh, and I think, you know, the black community, we're very familiar with Uncle Randy taking, you know, Calvin, you know, with him on the plumbing truck. Uh, right. So to the parents, you know, you know, know your child, man, you know, know uh, their gifts. And, and we know that if, if you're raising kids, you know, you're always discovering new gifts as you as they grow up. But know them well enough to know, you know, if you have to get out there and create an opportunity uh, for your kid to have an apprenticeship, you know, at the automotive, uh, local automotive shop, because that that actual training will help them, you know, and be applicable when they apply, you know, for uh, entering, you know, technical school or, or trade school. And so the kid now is learning how to run a business. They're, they're learning from a person who is a trusted person or their family member. So for that part or section of our community, um, you know, you have to be more vigilant with creating those opportunities, maybe with the guy who came by your house, who knows an electrician mm -hmm. and say, hey, man, my kid is interested in being an electrician. Can he, you know, how can we have him come work with you uh, that way? So I just wanted to put that into the conversation. So for that part of our community who may not be college bound and, and, and that, that, that budget. Yeah, and that's, I think that that's essential too, because, you know, quite frankly, college isn't what everybody's going to do. Um, and and um, there's plenty of people we've had actually on here before, yep. you know, we've had talking about trades and um, we've had some gentlemen on here that have made one hell of a living, you know, doing trade trade work. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Not only that, uh, most of the time that is an entrepreneurial endeavor. So you're owning your own business and um, that in itself has some, some freedoms associated with it. So um, we do know that, that, uh, doing any kind of trade work is important and, and uh, just as just as important as uh, the the type of work that we're talking about for those going to school. But the but the principles remain the same. Same, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The principles remain the same. You still have to work hard to get somebody to pull you in to do some sort of internship. You know, again, you talk about apprentice work or internship, really the same kind of thing. Um, so. Um, further, let's talk about it further. Let's talk about, um, things that you think are, well, let's not say things. What is the timing that you would say is most important for our folks to start, our, our kids to start looking at, um, doing internships? Yeah. So, uh, here I'll lean in, uh, on our experience with, with the 100s program. So what we did is, is we, re, um, kind of talk to, to some of the business community and leaders uh, in Atlanta. And, and the rhythm seems to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Otis, or add a little color here, but the rhythm seems to be that uh, internship opportunities are offered in, offered in the spring. And, you know, companies will recruit or they'll float the uh, opportunities at the college career centers or on campus during the fall semester. Uh, so students, you know, for those who are in college, uh, look, start to look inside of your department first, right? You're, where you're majoring at. And usually they'll have that bulletin board or like um, Kahari said, they'll send you the emails in the fall. Uh, but then there are other companies who they start um, recruiting theirs in the spring. I was talking to someone, uh, I got an email today from Regions Bank who just floated an internship uh, for 2022 summer but they're gonna be recruiting this fall. So it's, it's, it's very diverse and OT, you might be able to speak to what you've seen uh, in, in the way of kind of timing. Uh, I, think you, I think you covered it, Fred, but I would also say too, uh, for students, start looking, you know, freshman, sophomore year, don't wait till your junior and senior yeah. year, start looking for internships, you know, try earlier because then as you get to your junior, senior year, you can get better internships. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So yeah, Marty, uh, the fall is the time to really be grooming yourself, uh, really kind of and, and stepping outside of your comfort zone, uh, being able to go rehearse at the career center or with a roommate if you've got a virtual interview coming up, which is tough, you know, but that's probably what's going to be going on uh, going forward. Uh, because, you know, you can interview more people by volume. 
for mm -hmm. less time and energy when when you're talking about doing it virtually. So, you know, what does that look like when you have to make sure your camera and screen image is, is brilliant and then what's behind you, you know, and then be able to master your emotions at the same time. Uh, but, but yeah, so, you know, being that it's virtual, companies have a lot, lot more flexibility when they float the opportunities. One of the things, um, appreciate that, brothers. One of the things I also want to uh, get into before we get too far gone, um, two things uh, we want to get into before we close out and start talking about things. We got a while, but I know these are two topics that can take the conversation. One, I want to make sure before we close out tonight that we talk about actual opportunities for them. You know, some places they can go, some websites they can look at. We'll put it on our website. We'll put it on our links and so forth. So I want to get to that. But right now, Marty always asks a question. And again, I've learned from him with this because when we ask this question, it really hits home different for different people. But it's so important to hear it each week. And it's really been educational. But what are some of the myths? What are some of the myths about young people getting internships? Um, and when I, you know, I want to say, it's, it's, I really like to say internships because, you know, it's jobs slash internships, you know, um, at the high school and college level. What are some of the interns? Uh, what are some of the myths? I ask that because often many of the students that I mentor, Fred, and I know you, I learned a lot of mentoring you from you. Let, let's just be clear. Whether I was, you knew I was taking notes or not, I learned a lot from you. And a lot of kids come to me and say, hey, you know, I'm 15, but I want to work. And the last thing you want to do is tell a 15-year-old, oh, man, you're too young. Or, sorry, sweetie, you know, you're still too young. You want, you, you want that energy. If they, if they want that smoke right there, you want to give them those spaces. So what are some of the myths? for high schoolers or college students with respect to interns or jobs that we should disp dispel? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest myths about, uh, particularly for high schoolers and having, you know, uh, internship opportunities is that, you know, you're too young. Uh, I think we rely more on external resources to, to, to fill our needs in terms of our community jobs, internships and the like that I think we have the bandwidth in our community to create uh, internship opportunities. And what I mean by that, particularly for the high schoolers, what they have to realize is just when somebody asks you, you know, why do you want to work? Like, what do you want to work for? Being thoughtful to say, man, either I want to get some money to do A, or I want some experience so I can springboard and do B. Uh, and so depending on, you know, the, 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 the kid and the context, uh, mm -hmm. You know, we can create an internship at Attorney Davis's office. You right. know, the 100 Black Men of Atlanta hired an intern uh, for our uh, executive director, I think. And then I'm going to hire an intern from the Collegian 100. So I think, you know, doing an intern at your church with the secretary right. is, is internship. Because all of the skills and attention to detail that one would need if you're at Coca-Cola, you can learn right there at the church house, you know, right under the direction of the secretary, because most church secretaries right. are serious about their books. <laughs> so, oh, yes. So, hey, 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 Fred, most of them run the church, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly <laughs> Otis. Be clear. Yes, sir. And, and I, I was, I was going to say another myth is, you know, um, most internships aren't about just grabbing coffee and making copies. And so, they want you to come in there and do something that's meaningful. And so if you find that you aren't doing anything that's meaningful, ask them, say, hey, I want to do more. Um, that's right. Also, it's OK yeah. to make mistakes. Again, again, students, it's OK to make mistakes. So, you know, do yeah. things. If you make a mistake, own up to it. Say, hey, I, I did this wrong. What can I do better? You know, but it's OK to make mistakes. Don't be too afraid to where you don't do anything and, you know, um, you're not doing what you want to do. Also, you necessarily don't have to cut your hair if you, you know, because they want you to be authentic. They hired you because right. of who you are and go there and be authentic. Just make sure that you're clean. And as Joe mentioned before, and uh, as, as Marty mentioned, make sure you understand the culture of right. the organization. Um, you know, you, you, sometimes you have to dress a certain way just to make sure you fit in, you know, with the other people that are working there. Right. Um, and another point, you know, always sort of dress how you want to for your next job. And so 
That's you right. See your manager yeah. doing something a certain way, or somebody that you strive to be like. You know, kind of model yourself some sometimes after that person. Agreed. Not necessarily all the time, Agreed. but make sure you're self-aware. You can pay attention to that. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good point, Otis. Because you know, we 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 at our age, we we woke and we we don't code switch and bump that. I'm just, but let me tell you, you know, if you want a job, sometimes you have to go alone to get along, as as was quoted in a movie one time. And I don't think there's there's a you know, if I'm going to go get a job at Chick Fil A, that's not the time to protest and say I don't I don't like wearing uniforms or I don't like wearing this shirt or I don't like saying you know, thank you, ma'am, and no, sir. Like, that's not the time. And there's a time and a place for everything. And so you learn from those experiences so that they, you know, become part of your growth, you know, and part of your growth might be, okay, I know I don't want a job like that anymore. I want a job where I can dress like this, where I can, where I, I remember for the longest time when I got into, ed- Fred, you're going to laugh at me. When I got into education, my big thing was I wanted to coach so that I could wear sweatpants and a t-shirt every day to work. That was my reason. <laughs> that, that was my solid reason. And, 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 and Joe, I got a friend, he's in technology now. He said he never wants to go back to where he has to wear khakis or you yeah. know, slacks. <laughs> he gets to wear sneakers every day. Exactly. You know, and everything, he loves it. But he, he, exactly. he, he said he never wants to, he worked in that place before he worked in finance, but he worked at a, a, a credit uh, bureau experience mm-hmm. on it. He had to wear you know, slacks and a button up shirt every day. He said, yep. I never want to go back to that. So every job yep. he looks for, he's looking for something that's in technology. Where there you he, go. He also, I think was we all talked about, he wants to understand the culture, you know, of the yeah, organization. That's important. It's also, it's not about the person hiring you and, and if you're a fit for them, but, you know, are they a fit for you? As Joe mentioned, if you don't want to say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, it's my pleasure, you don't That's want to take play. Exactly. The truth of it is, Otis, you probably don't want to work too many places in that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Exactly. That, that goes to a point that I was going to talk about. I, I've, I've been fortunate and have hired some, some interns and folk, folks in the past. Uh, one of the things that, that I always talk to them about as being essential for them being successful in their work is having a customer service mindset because that doesn't cost you anything, right? That's right. Having, having that mindset is going to do one of two things for you. It's either going to work for you externally, meaning the people that are coming into the door of that company, or secondly, and, and also secondly, it's going to work for you internally, meaning the people that are your, your uh, superiors are going to see you and say, Hey, you know, that, that that Frederick dude, he really got his stuff together only because you've just done some basic customer service action, right? Yep. Saying thank you. Um, um, please, how can I help you? Some very basic things that aren't, you know, that's that's just common common sense, right? That's not you being going outside of who you are. That's what we all should be doing, right? Being be- decent people. So showing yourself to be that, I think, uh, winds up making you have a better impression on that company. Likewise, anybody that comes into that company and says, you know, especially if you're a young looking person, if you're a young man, young lady, they're going to say, who is this sharp young kid? You know, simply because he held a good conversation. Right. So um, I, I had the four, I, w- I had a kid is I mean, tell a quick story. I had a kid that I worked for um, Conica Minolta many moons ago when I, when I, first got into being a, a sales director. And uh, this kid would come to my office every day and literally knock on the window of my office. Young young brother, about, I think he was 14 at the time. And so I tell him to come around, like, what do you want? <laughs> it's a weird thing, what do you want? And he was like, is there any work that I could do here? He was like, I, I want it, can I get a job here? And he was, like I said, 14 or 15. I'm like, yo, you're a little young for you know what we're looking for here. And, but he was so sharp and professional. I kept saying to myself, how could I do something for this kid? I wind up talking to HR and I got him on as a, uh, as an intern and all he did was file, you know, but he was that, that kid that said everything right all the time. And it was cause he was, you know, he was brought up nicely, but it was just funny that he wound up years later, I gave him his first full-time job. Cause wow. I still, I worked for the company wow. for eight years. He came back, 
he came on as a salesperson right when I he was my last hire. I left the company and I hired that kid. I wonder what he's doing today. But he was so sharp on being just on time every day. He would beat me to I opened the office. He beat me to the office. Mm-hmm. He'd be there cold rain, sleet, or snow. He'd be there. Those are the kind of things that if you young folks out there listening are doing, you know, even at at 13, 14 years old, people will find something for you. People will want to work with you and you can port yourself the right way. People will do, do, do for you. So um, I just want to throw that story out there because I forgot about no, it. That's it's, important, you know, man. I was like, um, I remember that kid's name was Anthony. I can't remember his last name. Probably, he's probably, he's probably a CEO now, by the way. Yeah, he oh, definitely is outranking us at this point. He's definitely outranking us. In the right. back. I, was, I was gonna say Fred did a program with Southwest Airlines and they were uh, working and talking to some students about job opportunities and I actually sat in on a breakout room with a young lady who said, Well, I don't I don't have any skills that are relatable. So yes, you do. You worked as a cashier, you know, at the grocery store, and so you're able to transfer those skills and say, Hey, I have customer service skills. Hey, right. as you mentioned before, Marty, I'm on time. You know, there are all those little things that you learn throughout that process mm-hmm. at um at the at the grocery store that are transferable to other jobs and most of Definitely. it as Joe and everyone's been talking about today, a lot of it's just a soft skill part. Absolutely. Uh, that that you can transfer anywhere, you know, the results and that you, you know, help to create customer service uh scorecards at the at the organization. So mm-hmm. again, it's those soft skills that you learn. Yeah. And Joe, uh Fred Fred was on point. We do know each other from Crystal Ray and, and Book. We connect, we made a connection about before you move to oh, South before you went to South Carolina. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. I know. All right. All right, Esther. Connected yeah. with Esther. <laughs> no, I yeah. knew it. Yeah. 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 yeah I knew yeah. it, man. She's taking my position over there. Yeah. yeah. She's doing great things over there. So you were right, Fred. Yeah. I told you, Joe. <laughs> Otis knows everybody, bro. A <laughs> small world, man. Failed, small man. world. But, but yeah, t- but the, the story you told, Marty, is really just the story of persistence and courage and gumption. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think, you know, for our students, you know, it's not enough to just get hired and be happy to have the little card lanyard around your neck with Coca-Cola on it saying that I'm an intern. But if, you know, on the first day you're making copies and the last day you're making copies, then it didn't serve you well. You've right. got to be, you know, you've got to be persistent. Like OT said, hey, man, you know, I'm, I, I like what I think I see you doing. Tell me what you do. You know, yeah. what degree did you have to have? You know, can I shadow you one day? Because, you know, I'm going to make my copies between 8 and 11, but I can shadow you maybe in the afternoon. And and that kind of, you know, just, uh, what, go get it, Miss Y'all? I don't know what the word is, but just, you know, being able, young people, um, to, to, to where you start doesn't determine where you end. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, so, yeah, you might start making copies, but don't end up making copies. Yeah, and and that, that young fella, he... Uh... He would ask, can I, can I go, can I go out with your salespeople? Can I, you know, he's like, cause he was literally, sometimes he'd be sitting in the office doing nothing. And I'd say, Anthony, you, you know, I didn't have nothing else for him to do. Why don't you go clean the kitchenette? Right. <laughs> I'm just coming up with stuff for him because I got him, I got him where he could get a little, little change in his pocket. But um, yeah, he learned as much as he could and he wanted to. And I think that that's, that's the biggest key. Just like with, with Kahari on here early, it's the want to. You know, he yeah. knew what he wanted to do. And um, it, that I would tell young folks out there that if there's anything, and we say this in the Black Man Lab all the time, and, and let me let me rewind the tape a little bit. This is what the Black Man Lab is really all about, right? Definitely. It's really about us finding spaces for our young Black men, and in this case now it's young Black people in general, but finding spaces for them to go get their greatness. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Because normally, in the, under normal circumstances, these spaces don't exist for them. So we want to help to connect the dots. And when we have our, our um, you know, live sessions, we have a room full of people that are professionals in what they've done. We have panelists that are that are top of the top of the food chain of what they're doing. Whatever that is that we have as a topic that night. Um, and these young folks are able to touch them, talk to them, make connections, get numbers. And we've seen a number of internships happen from number of mentors, mentorships happen from. And um, that's because those people in that room want it, you know, and we want all of our young people to want it. 
And the reason that we want you all to want it is we know that you are capable. We know that you have it. And we want you to get your greatness so that we as a people can be great. And I'll get off my soapbox from that. No, that's, that's important, bro. That's important. And, and it's funny because we kind of transitioned into talking about, um, you know, we talked about transferable skills. We talked about job behaviors, job cultures. And, and it sounds like, well, I thought you guys were talking about internships. But that's what all of this is, you know, because what an internship is, is nothing more than your opportunity to get in and look for something longer term later. So all of these things that we're doing, that we're talking about, how you behave in there, that's getting the internship, but then also how you get your good job after that by having those behaviors, by knowing the cultures and, and, and by, by either acquiescing because this is an opportunity I want to grow or not acquiescing and saying, I know what I want, I want to be in technology. And so these, this is all very valuable. What I want to transition into, gents, is, is what are some of the opportunities that are out there now? I have a, a couple in the back of my head I want to talk about, so don't feel that if you don't have anything, you don't have to say it. But, Fred, I, I know you, so I know that, you know, you, you have some things you want to say. Oh, this I suspect if you roll with Fred, you probably do too. But what are some actual opportunities coming up maybe this summer that some of our youth, high school or college, could look into? Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about one that uh, just happened. Uh, as I was saying, it's uh, this is for those who are on the trade side, and they can hit this okay. website. Uh, actually, I don't know, Joe. Want me to put it in the chat or just yeah, put it in the it. chat, and then I'm gonna go okay. post it um, online. Okay, cool. So it's a it's about getting some practical skills uh, with. Uh, moderate pay, you know, anywhere from 12 to $17, but you're working with your hands in this opportunity and it's across um, Fulton County, including Atlanta and East Point College Park. Uh, but it's opportunities for young people. Uh, you have to be 18 and I'll put okay. that in the chat and it's okay. uh, called Staff Mark. And then the other opportunity, uh, I'm going to tell young people what Kahari said and just reiterate and double down, indeed, for the young collegians. Uh, okay. That is a great tool for internships and entry level positions. And then I'll add young folk, get a LinkedIn profile and you're going to create your LinkedIn profile and then you'll enter certain conversations from LinkedIn that will produce opportunities because those people in that group will be talking about it. Uh, and so Regions Bank has an opportunity and I'll put that in the chat as well. Again, that internship opportunity will start looking for students in the fall uh, for the summer internship in the, uh, for the internship next summer. Uh, and so those are two that I knew that I would share tonight and I'll put those in the chat, Joe. All right, that, that. Um... I, I was actually sent one today. It's uh, Fulton County. And I think this is one of the annual. I think my son and my daughter have done this. Yes. Fulton County District 5 Commissioner Marvin Arrington in the city of South Fulton. They're having uh, a teen hiring fair on Saturday, May 15th at Welcome All Park. Saturday, May 15th at Welcome All Park. City of South Fulton, Marvin Arrington, um, are having a summer teen hiring fair. Um, so that's one that, that I've come across. Um, and then there's um, uh, Wagner Staffing. Is, uh, is a, they always send me texts. I, I signed up for their things because a lot of the young men that I mentor are just looking for, you know, opportunities, even if it's temp placements. And I will tell you, 30? How, how do I I ain't going to get into all that. So 20 some odd years ago, my first job out of college was a temp job that I turned into a full placement. It was a temp job with a temporary agency, no benefits, anything. And I finessed that into a full-time opportunity and literally the rest of my career followed that initial path. Um, so Wagner Staffing is an organization that they text me updates. Um, Amazon? Amazon's always hiring. Always. Amazon is always hiring. I, I can go get a job with Amazon with a full-time job. Right now, I can go get a job at Amazon. They're always hiring. Uh, Clorox out in, I want to say, Douglasville had a hiring opportunity. Clorox out in Douglasville. So these are just some of the things I've come across. I'm going to go put these in, in, in um, the Facebook link. 
if others want to chime, chime in, I'm going to go start typing some of those up as well. And Joe, I'll drop that regions uh, in the chat. I was just looking for the link. I want to make sure it's the right one with the dates and everything. Uh, but it, it's for college students. And OT, I don't know if you want to chime in uh, on any of that. No, I, I'll send if I come across anything, I'll send it to you, Fred, so you can share with the group. Um, but I okay. do know um, Chick Fil A is hiring corporate and in some of their stores. Um, it's just their corporate office is here. You know, if you were to work in one of the stores and did a wonderful job, I'm sure you get a great recommendation. You know, for the corporate office. So um, the, I know the corporate office is looking for some hires, um, as I well as um, uh, Papa John's. Uh, so Papa John's just moved their corporate office here. Uh, to uh, the battery where the Atlanta Braves play. And so I know that they are looking to hire a bunch of people before July. And so I am sure that some of those are internships or opportunities for younger people to get, get in. Hey, I, I got a quick question. As as a black culture, did we cancel Papa John's or are they cool? I I, I just want to be clear. Oh, yeah. Shaq, Shaq changed the game, Joe. They're, they're trying to get back. Shaq they, changed the game, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. Yeah, they, they, they're hiring black people because they, they, they're trying to make up for their mistakes. I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shaq went hard on them, bro. <laughs> I bet. I'll, I'll put that in there then. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the things that I'll also say uh, for our folks that are listening in, um, young folks, don't be afraid to, if there is a company that you are interested in, whether they are hiring or not, um, you know, if you're in college, high school, uh, late high school, of course, um, approach that company, push it because, you know, whether or not they can pay you isn't what you're looking for, right? That's now. right. What you're looking for is the experience and the ability to put, I worked for ABC company mm -hmm. and internship there on your resume and making a impression with that company. Um, as I talked about that young fellow that I wound up hiring eventually, when he first came on, he wasn't a hire. He was just doing work around the office because he was so he was so adamant about trying to trying to get some experience. Um, that same thing can happen with anybody. You can find a company that you're interested in that will be willing to take you on, although they might not be willing to pay you. They might be willing to give you some experience. So um, don't don't be totally discouraged if if somebody is not doing that uh, internship program specifically they may still still be able to bring you on um what do we got here uh questions in the comments about oh, let me go check bro you see that okay sorry y'all we're getting messages coming in at the same time um we are we're pushing the clock here but i don't i don't want us to miss out on anything with this subject matter is there anything that we've missed fellas that you want to touch on before i kind of transition to to how we round out our night uh, no, I was just going to reiterate what you just sort of said. Sometimes if you do something for free, it goes a long way. So uh, one of the opportunities that I had, I interned for about two months for free and then turned into, you know, a paid job for a while. So mm -hmm. it definitely helps. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and those, it's great to have that on your resume. You know, they, definitely. whoever is your next hire doesn't know whether or not you got paid. You know, That's right. You just know that you work there and... If that, especially if that company that you work for is willing to give you a, a reference, that's that's huge. You know, that's huge. And I want to give uh, just a couple of stats just to let the young people know that where they might doubt themselves um, and their skills, folks are looking for you. Uh, Eighty-three percent of the people who land an internship usually get hired. You know, with that company, eighty-three yeah. percent. Yeah. And right now. You know, on the tech side, 51 percent, you know, white men and 42 percent um, Asians and only two percent black. You know, these are your Yahoo's, your LinkedIn's, your Google's. And so they're looking for your uniqueness, uh, young people. The, the data shows that they're looking for you because you actually help the bottom line. Diversity actually helps the bottom line of corporations. And that data is true as well. The more diverse, the better your, your profit margins uh, because the creativity is more, more abundant. So, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. One of the questions that we'd had from uh, Facebook was any leads for music production internships? Um, 
I, one of the, the, uh, one of our partners, I won't even say somebody that works with, they're our partner, partner, um, is Rap Plug. Um, Rap Plug has been with us for pretty much since the beginning of, um, of, uh, Black Man Lab. And they do have some internships. Um, that was from Danielle Johnson Davis, um, who had that question. And, um, we can maybe connect some dots because Rap Plug does our, our brother there, uh, who is the CEO, Craig King, does do some internships with with Rap Plug. Rap Plug is like, um, I guess, as he he puts it, it's like the LinkedIn for the music industry. Okay. Um, so they deal with music production. They deal with all parts of music, so video, music production, everything. And um, I know that they do do. Um, uh, internships there so that we can maybe connect those dots there for you, um, Sister Danielle. So um, that's all we got, unless anybody has anything else. Okay. Well, we end every week with um, talking about our habits, rituals, and disciplines. Those things that we do on a daily basis that keeps us moving forward, right? And in this space that we're talking about today, we're talking about kind of the workforce, you know, we know that that can be tenuous at times and, and we know that we need to have a mindset ready for that every day. So each day, there's certain things that we do uh, to stay centered and, and be able to move forward in our habits, rituals, and disciplines. So I'm going to ask you brothers what your habits, rituals, and disciplines are on a daily basis. And, um, you know, maybe some of our young folks might want to put those things into their daily lexicon or what they do. Uh, to keep themselves moving forward. So I'll start with you, Brother Fred. Talk about your habits, rituals, and disciplines. Uh, yes, sir. Every morning, my ritual of prayer. Um, as a Buddhist practitioner, I begin and end the day uh, with Thanksgiving. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, I still vision cast, even though it's not, you know, a best-selling video anymore. I still cast vision uh, every day and envision my success uh, before I get out of bed, I think about, you know, everything that I have to get done that day. Uh, and then when my feet hit the floor, I'm about the business of getting it done. Awesome. Awesome. How about you, Brother OT? Yeah, so um, I'm not uh, doing meditation as much as Fred, but I have started it. So uh, I'm doing it weekly on Mondays with a group of brothers. Um, but I'm also starting to take time and do it, you know, myself. So I did it this morning. Uh, with the group, but also looking to do that, as Fred says, it definitely clears your mind and gets you focused. Also have a habit of looking at my calendar the night before, just so I can mm. kind of understand what I have planned for the next day. The right. thing I need to right. prepare for um, that I have not done, you know, for that. And so um, also um, another one is just making sure I, I drink water before I go to bed and when I first get up to get my blood flowing. And so um, and just getting more active, brothers. And so, you know, health is wealth. And so making sure that I'm taking care of myself. So Indeed. thank you for the time today. I look forward to uh, uh, working with you guys in the future. Absolutely, brother. We appreciate you. And uh, we appreciate the dream, gems that you've dropped this evening. So thank you for that. Brother Joe, I want to know yours, too. I know I know yours, but I want the folks out there to know yours. So nah, you nah, I love it, man. I love it. Is. Well, you know, having my sensei on uh, the lab tonight, Brother Fred Palm, I, and again, I don't, I don't cop so much of his behaviors from him, you'll never know. But just a while back, back when we were at the Y, man, we were doing Black Men Lab, and, you know, he was on the panel talking about his Buddhist practices. And I had just started practicing, and it was weird to me. I, I wasn't understanding so forth. But then when I saw him and how long he had been doing it, how at peace he was, I, I, I consistently went, uh, went with it. And it's been, it's been very transformative, man. I, I've been at peace more than I ever have in my life because I'm starting every morning with my Buddhist chant, with my Buddhist prayer. Um, and just I look at things just in a different way. It's, it's, it's not so much a deity that I'm, I'm worshiping or thanking, but just the universe and everything that's provided for all of us that we all have access to. So I start my day with that. Um, I definitely am walking, you know, anywhere from four to seven miles a day. As I've gotten a, a, a little older, I can't really jog so much. So uh, definitely walking to to keep the um, the blood flowing. And then, like Otis said, water. Water is you know something I, I used to not really be into, but it it it's it's oil for the body. It really you know lubricates the joints. It keeps things you know smooth. 
um, and, and it keeps things nice and, you know, uh, digesting properly. It just does a whole lot for your body. And, and so those are my, my three things, man. And, and I've been uh, pretty consistent at them as of, as of the past few years. How about you, good brother? What, what are you up to nowadays, Marty? <laughs> well, uh, my, my schedule has been a little crazy, as y'all know. I've been going right. back from, yeah, Florida. from Florida, but um, that's that's also required me to try to get my mind as tight as possible. Um, so I definitely every morning have been very purposeful in meditating and, and trying to stay in a space of um, of gratefulness um, and and. and um, thankfulness for for yeah. the day, every day when I wake up, because um, I know that especially nowadays it doesn't have to be that way. Um, the other thing that I'm gotten really good at is uh, kind of to Brother Otis's point is my calendar. I used to be really good at it with my phone before, um, but then my phone took a dump and I lost all my information in it, and wow. so I, for a period of time I was lost there, <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting back there now to where I'm, I'm being real, real steady with my calendar so that I know what I'm doing every day. Also, um, I think with the, the challenges of life, you, you get to being forgetful about stuff, you know, you stuff, so much stuff going on in your head. So it's important to have, you know, a, a list going for yourself, uh, especially maybe it's just because we're of a certain age. I don't know, but, um, right. Yeah. But the, so, so those things, and then also, um, you know, I told you brothers before the hot yoga. I've, I've I haven't been as consistent because I've been back and forth. But um, today I went for two hours. So oh, nice. um, yeah. So nice. I, um, I just try to try to do that whenever I can now um, because I just haven't been as consistent. But it does make a huge difference. I think the sweating out of all those toxins in your body that build up, and then just being in that quiet hot space you know, allows for, for that meditation piece too. So those are the things that I've been doing consistently, man. So um, we want all y'all out there to do the same, do, do stuff that's going to keep you moving forward and keep you a sane mind so that we can do this work and we can grow as a people, man. That's what it's all about. Brothers. Uh, we are at, at the end and we're going to wrap up like we always do, man. We're going to, we're going to um, do our tradition. Uh, Brother Otis, what we do every week is uh, we end in a tradition that comes from Sister Njiri Algani, who was uh, one of the, the leaders of in Cobra here in Atlanta. And um, she would end every, every session with doing what we call a link in the chain. And we do that here at Black Man Lab, too. When we're in person, we're, we link arms together. And then we repeat the following. So I'm going to ask the brothers to raise your arms like we're linked together here on the screen. And then just repeat after me. I'm a link in this chain. I'm, I'm a link, link in this chain. chain. And it won't break here. And, and it, it won't, won't break, break here. here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a, I'm link, a link in this, in this chain. chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break, it won't break here. here. We are links in this chain. We are links are in this in chain. chain. And we won't break here. And we, and we won't break, break here. here. I say. I say. I say. Thank you. Appreciate and, you, brothers. OT, dead of gratitude, bro. Brother Otis, you are now a part of the Black Man Lab. Yeah. So when we are meeting in person, we plan on having you in the space, brother. Right. Uh, I'll be there. This all right. Cool. Thank all you, right. guys. We, Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you, Otis. Thank you, Fred. Mark, thank hey, you Joe. for the production. Quality as always, brother. Everything was great, Mark. Appreciate you. Love you guys, man. Love you, man. Love Thank you, man. Joe, Marty. Great to be back. I'll see y'all next.